Does your car or truck not feel as fuel efficient as usual? Well, there's probably something simple in your air intake system that you've neglected to service. For your engine to work efficiently, it's got to breathe. You got to get air into the engine. And getting the air into the engine, you have to go through the air filter, the mass airflow sensor, the throttle body, and the intake plenum and gaskets, all of which you can buy at 1AAuto.com. Let's start with the air filter. That's pretty much the beginning of the road where all the air has to go through before it gets into the engine. Most vehicles, there's an air box. It's pretty obvious where it is. And you'll see that the air box is connected to a snorkel and it goes into the engine. Every air box is a little bit different in how you get the air filter out. Some have just clips like this one. You just take a straight blade screwdriver or pocket screwdriver, slide this cover off. Some have screws that hold it in or clamps. And the air filter comes right out. Take a good look at the filter. You notice that it's starting to get dirty. Obviously, if it's worse than this, then you want to replace it. If you notice that the fins are starting to separate, then the engine is struggling to draw air. If you notice that there's any cracks in any of the fins, then that's not good. You're getting, then you're getting unfiltered air into the engine and you don't want that. One of the other things you can do when you're looking at the filter is hold it up to the light. If you can't see light coming through the filter, then it's been neglected and needs to be replaced. If you think of this air filter like a vacuum filter, if your vacuum, the filter's dirty, it's gonna have to struggle a lot more just to do the same job. So we need a clean air filter because we need clean air and we need the correct amount of volume. Now how your vehicle knows about the correct amount of volume is with the mass airflow sensor. The airflow is going to go past the air filter and into the mass airflow sensor, which is located right here. It's normally after or attached somewhere near the air box before it goes into the engine. It's pretty easy to change. Almost all of them are very simple. You've got a connector right here. You just push down on the tab and then there's two screws. It slides right out and this is what's going to meter the air going into the engine. Now if you neglected to change your air filter, dirty air can get into here and cause this little sensor right here to get dirty. If that gets dirty, then it's not going to be running right. The calculations for the air getting into the engine is going to be off and you're going to cause a fuel efficiency problem. You could even cause a check engine light in most cases. Now they do make mass airflow sensor cleaner, but for the most part, once this has gotten dirty enough where it's setting codes, um, the sensor itself needs to be replaced. Moving on, the air filter filters the air, the mass airflow sensor reads how much volume of air, and then here is the throttle body, and that controls how much airflow goes into the engine. Here's what a throttle body looks like. Normally there's four bolts that hold the throttle body onto the intake manifold. There is a butterfly flap right here that opens and closes. As you step on the accelerator, this will open, allowing more air to go in, and when you let off, it closes real tight. There is air still getting by there. And then some also have an idle air control valve. There might be another hole in here that air actually goes by that. Another piece of the throttle body is the motor that actually controls the flap opening and closing, which is in here, and also the sensor to tell the computer where the blade is. Over time, you will notice that you get some carbon buildup on the backside of the throttle blade and even on the throttle body itself. And that's gonna cause some issues you're not gonna get as much airflow going through there. The computer is gonna have to compensate for that carbon buildup and things aren't gonna be running as smoothly as they should be. Sometimes this carbon buildup can just be cleaned up with some brake parts cleaner or some carb cleaner. You just take the throttle body off and clean this up. The best tool to use is a toothbrush, but something important to note that you really should not be opening the blade like this. Um, some of these are very sensitive to even dropping them and they're no good anymore. And also when you're messing around with the blade, it's going to cause it to not be calibrated anymore and you're going to end up having to either program the computer or have to replace the throttle body. A few of the symptoms you're going to notice with a throttle body when it's not performing properly is you'll end up with a check engine light with a throttle body related code. You'll have the carbon buildup on there and that's gonna cause it to run rough and you may have weak or poor acceleration. 
You may also notice a idle that isn't where it should be, whether it's idling extremely high or even extremely low. Another thing to think about is with the carbon buildup on the throttle bodies, the throttle body might stick and you're not going to notice it as much as when you had a cable activated throttle body with the electronically controlled throttle bodies. Um, you may just notice a delay when you go to step on the accelerator. Um, it just takes a while for the engine to get going and that's because the throttle body is stuck. After you're done cleaning the throttle body or you're replacing it, you're going to want to replace the gasket as well. Certain vehicles require an idle relearn update after. You can use a scan tool. Sometimes you can do this manually. You don't have to use a scan tool. You're going to have to run the vehicle for about three minutes, shut it down. There may be a different procedure depending on the vehicle. All right, here's the deal. We've got clean air, we've got monitored air, we've got controlled air, and the last part of the puzzle is the intake plenum. That's the last area where the airflow goes before it gets into the engine. The important part about the intake plenum doing its job is it needs to be sealed properly. It needs to be sealed up against the heads of the vehicle and it does that with some gaskets on the back side of it. Now if the plenum itself has been warped or cracked or if the gaskets have collapsed, you're going to have unmetered air going into the engine. Remember, unmetered. It's going into the engine and then your air fuel ratio is going to be off and that's going to cause a check engine light, drivability issues. Some of the ways you can diagnose whether you have an air intake leak is if you have the engine running, it's running rough, and you notice you hear almost like an air whistling type noise in this area. Um, you could also take some carburetor cleaner and spray it in the areas. Just be careful, you don't want to spray it near the alternator or anything flammable. And if the engine changes, whether the engine changes and runs rougher or the idle changes, that's where your air intake leak is going to be. And if you have to replace the intake plenum, they're fairly easy. For the most part, you're going to take the throttle body off and there'll be a couple bolts that hold it onto the engine. You take that off, there's probably a bracket on the back and then replace it with a new one or replace the gaskets. Now you know a little more about your air intake system and how to keep it up to par and get better fuel economy. If you enjoyed this video and it helped you out, make sure you subscribe to our channel, ring the bell, turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our videos. And if you need parts for your vehicle, make sure you click the link in the description and head over to 1AAuto.com.